comrades, Commissar Bro here today with Redcon. This is a very interesting game that I've come to very much enjoy in the past 45 minutes or so that I've been playing it. That's right, it's a, it's a new one from Hexage, literally just came out today. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. It's in this po post apocalyptic future where you're fighting in almost like artillery battles where each person has a battle fortress and they blast away at each other and so on and so forth. The first couple of missions are a little iffy, but once you start to actually get to customize your forts, that's where the game really starts to get interesting. So without further ado, that's what we're going to do. We're going to customize our fort. Here we go, we're going to put a, a put a siege mortar, a Talos siege mortar. Right there, we're gonna get a, a Hydra assault cannon, one of these bad little guys. And we're gonna throw this, uh, hmm, I guess we'll throw it right there. That looks like to be a good spot. Let's buy a basilisk. And we'll put our basilisk, I suppose, right here. Can we buy another one? Yes, we can. Phenomenal. We can buy one more. Good. So we've got plenty of basilisks. Basilisks are basically. Just regular turrets, they don't do too much. A Talos Siege Mortar is better against structures, um, and it shoots at an arc. Yeah, but it takes longer to fire one of these. This thing fires multiple basilisk shells that are just smaller. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll get to actually see what I'm talking about when we start playing. So, defenses. Eh, we can't really build any defenses, but we can build some utilities. The Medical Ray Station. Basically, it heals dying soldiers. Pretty, pretty straightforward. We're gonna put that right here, and then the basilisk radar, which, as said here, predicts the impact zones of enemy projectiles and flashes the targeted rooms in red. Ballistic radar provides our guns with reliable targeting data, adding five percent to their accuracy. Also, there's an operator which gives it another ten percent accuracy to all weapons as well. So yes, it's pretty necessary to have one of these. It gives you a real strong advantage over your enemy. You also get perks, which you gain as you play. And you also get layouts, which basically give you different layouts to your fort. I chose the one with extra weapon and concrete. Yeah, that's right. So, aside from that, it looks like we are ready to go, dear comrades. So, let's get straight to it. Done? Alright. What else do we need to do? Nothing, as you can see, I'm 7% to the wall. We're gonna go to the battle. Let's do this. Target acquired. Crux Underground Supply Depot looks very poorly defended. Why it does? Let's take it out. Every Crux shell denied is a life saved. Absolutely. So we're gonna concentrate all fire, I think, on this guy in the back. Get our siege mortar. Fire at the front one. And as you see, it gets pretty quick and pretty fast. So what you have to do is you have to get your guys, move them around. This guy will not be selected. There he goes. We're sending them down there to repair. All right, good enough. This one's still taking heavy damage. Ooh, he's getting messed up. Send for the medical ray room. Heal, mother's man. Heal. All right, so we've lost our bottom gun. No bueno. This is no bueno. But we have taken out their repeating shell. So we can change our shots to other locations. We will keep the repeater hitting that area there to make sure that they don't repair it. We'll take our dude who is actually healing, send him over, and allow him to increase our accuracy. Weapons that are manned have various bonuses. It'll show you right here. Operator improves weapon accuracy by plus 10%. Simple stuff, right? And I think they all pretty much operate that way. The Talos Siege Mortar, if you have an operator, reduces the reload time by 25% and calibrates the weapon for 5% accuracy. So, you also have special abilities of sort that you can use. Like, let's try out the Shredder Bomb. And let's do a double shot from two of our basilisks. What can this guy do? Nine round volley. Okay, and you also have to remember to not have too many weapons. If you have too many weapons, you use up too much ammunition. 
that's what these guys have. They actually have like a uh, ammunition producer, like an armory factory, which allows them to build multiple things of that. So I guess we're gonna have to get rid of a nine round volley because we can't afford that. Ooh, still just letting the hate flow. The overall goal of what you're trying to do is you keep all their weapons and whatnot disabled as best you can and get down this green bar. When this green bar is gone, you win. Simple stuff. I paused it. Mm. Yeah, so it's a simple game. It's like faster than light in a sense. And I personally am very much enjoying it. My time spent with it so far has been a lot of fun. It's an interesting game, it's a strategy game, and in a sense it's kind of a puzzle game. Management, efficiency, and whatnot. You know, you start off by attacking certain locations and then you constantly change around depending on what you need to do. In this case, we've taken out all our enemies' guns. So we just have to make sure that they're not repairing it. And we have to try to kill their operators as best we can to stop them from, again, repairing their stuff and firing back at us. Their early levels are pretty easy, all in all, which is actually kind of a good thing. I can imagine later on in the game this getting very difficult and hard to manage. Again, just like Faster Than Light. That's actually one of the things that makes Faster Than Light so hard, is how much you have to manage in such a short period of time with nothing but a simple left click. Like I said, you can't really select multiple guns from what I can tell. Yeah, you can only select one gun at a time. So this means that everything has to be targeted. Again, I, I realize this is done for difficulty's sake, but honestly I would prefer to be able to like left click, shift click, and so on and so forth, but I don't think you're able to do that. So yeah, maybe I just haven't delved too deeply into the game yet, and that's why I haven't noticed that, but that's just the way it seems. Also, this is ridiculous. Come on, let's do some damage here. Let's take out what's left of this. Fire at all their other stuff. Oh, and you can also fire at the stuff below if you'd like. Ooh, a nice amount of damage, if I do say so myself. Fire on that. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. I love it. It's like a, just a World War One game without trench warfare. It would have been actually very interesting if you could also build units and send units to charge along. But the main focus was having this. You actually can send dudes up into airships and then send them over into the enemy base. And then they will actually attack around inside of the base. So that's a pretty cool idea, too. All in all, I think this is a pretty good game. It's only about $5.99, so realistically speaking, it's super cheap for something that's actually a lot of fun. Yeah, so this is definitely something I recommend. I think if you're into these types of games, go ahead and give this one a try. It's, again, only $5.99, and so far it's been a lot of fun. Who knows? You know, maybe it has a lot more in-depth and bigger fortresses. I've seen some of the screenshots uh, of the actual game. And, like, the fortresses you see later on in the game are gigantic. And you start getting massive artillery guns. Like, the, there's actually a level where you have to fight against a giant gun called a Typhon Super Gun. And, yeah, it's pretty intense. It's pretty intense. So, all in all, I like this game. I definitely recommend it. And if, you know, you're into strategy games or even, like, in a sense, kind of management puzzle strategy games, this would be a great one to pick up. Anyway, this has been CB, and I'll see you next time.